Hi you guys, welcome back to another card video at my YouTube channel. Today I wanted to share the card that I made for my October card group. It's a lot like the embossed resist that I did in the last video, but I had such a good time with the watercoloring, I wanted to give it another try. So let's get started and I will show you how I made this card. I decided to go ahead and use the Mammoth Elephant Trifecta stamp set for this. I really love those triangles and the graphic look. So I went ahead and put that on my Fisker's um, stamp press. I thought that would be a lot easier to use and allow me more control. I'm using again the Versamark ink, which is a sticky ink and is going to allow me to um, al allow the embossing powder to stick onto that. I'm also using a Tim Holtz uh, four and a quarter by five and a half watercolor piece of paper. This watercolor paper has a textured side and a smooth side and I've decided to use the smooth side for this card. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is um, I'm going to stamp the image over and over. Uh, well first I'm going to stamp the image and then I'm going to put on some embossing powder and I'm doing that each step at a time because the ink is clear and I can't see where I've stamped it so I don't know where to stamp the other ones unless I put on the powder so um, it just makes it easier as you can see it goes on clear and then you can um, see how it shows up so easily so I would definitely encourage you to do that a step at a time if you're using the clear on white um, I think if you're using Versamark ink on any other colored cardstock you would definitely be able to see it so you would probably be able to save some time um, by eliminating that step. So once I'm done with all of the stamping and putting on the powder I'm going to go ahead and put that under my heat tool and it's going to melt that powder and then it's going to allow the watercolors to resist. So then comes the fun part, the watercolor part. Um, I have chosen to use the Kiritake Gonzai watercolors. They're beautiful colors. They're creamy colors, very pigmented. I quite like them. I am not an artist. I don't really know anything about watercolors, but I've really enjoyed using these. Um, you can definitely put down watercolor to dry paper, but I have enjoyed the movement and the feel that you get when you saturate your paper first. I like that um, you you know exactly where your watercolors are going to go because when you put them in the water they're not going to go beyond the water. So I love being able to um, play with it but also have some control over it. So you can see that I'm laying down the water and when I add the pigment to the water the the color just moves and I find that so beautiful. I love how organic that is. I also love with watercolors if you make a mistake that you can just wipe it up and start over. So um, to me they're very forgiving. I've actually heard people say that they're not but the way that I use them um, it's definitely always worked for me. I'm also trying really hard to mix the colors so I don't have any definite lines um, but I had a really good time playing with that so definitely give watercolor a try. The one thing I wasn't sure when I started this card is how I wanted my sentiment to be. I didn't know if I wanted it to be black or if I wanted it to be white or if I wanted to do like a foil technique but ultimately I decided to do a foil technique and the paper that you're seeing is uh, paper that I printed on my laser jet. I, I just opened up a, up a document, made the whole thing black, and then printed it out. And then I cut it in half so that I could put it in my die cut machine. And the reason why I'm doing this is because for whatever reason, and I don't really understand the technology, but the foil, the heat foils that you can buy now that you can put in a laminating machine, uh, it sticks to the laser um, printer, the ink. It sticks to the ink that's been lasered onto the paper. And so um, I've had really good results in the past when I have die cut first 
and then done the laminating. The laminating, the laminating machine that I have is a Heidi Swap mink machine, and I also have her foils as well. And you'll see that I decided to use the silver on this. I kept going back and forth between silver and gold, but I ultimately like the silver best. Um, and I found that the easiest way to work with this and the easiest way to cut it is just to use a rotillery. And that way, I don't know, for some reason the scissors seemed to get in the way. This just seemed clean and easy. So I would encourage you to use that if you have it. Um, anyway, so I went ahead and I cut a piece of the foil and you want to definitely make sure that you have the shiny side up because that is the side that you want to have up on the thank you. And then I'm going to put it in the plastic sleeve that comes with the machine. And then I'm going to go ahead and put it through, um, my laminate machine. I believe it was on number three was the setting. I will definitely do a video coming up that shows you, um, how to use the laminating machine. Anyway, once it has gone through, I pulled it out and I just wanted to show you like how amazing this is. For some reason to me, this is just magic that it was black and now um, the foil has stuck to it. I don't know how it works, but it works and it is just magic. Once I had that die cut and the foil on it, I decided that it was a little too flimsy. Um, it's really intricate dye and I needed to add a little dimension to it. So what I wanted to do, and you can see in the example here how thin the one was and how thick the other, I want to build this up. And so I've seen other card makers do this with their die cuts and they die cut several onto whatever color cardstock they want and then they glue them together. Um, I've also seen this done with some fun foam, which hindsight, I probably would prefer to do that the next time because this was so intricate. I felt that it was actually kind of hard and really kind of a sticky mess to glue it all together, but um, it worked out and it was totally fine, but maybe next time I would try another option. The glue that I was using there was the Tombow Mono Adhesive Glue, and I really liked that it was a liquid glue, so it allowed you some time to fiddle with the die cuts before it like set in place. So now it's time to put this card all together. So um, the cardstock I used was white, 80 pound cardstock, I believe it was from Basil, and I just scored that at four and a quarter and folded that in half. It was a half a sheet of eight and a half by 11. Um, and then I went ahead and I, I grabbed some um, foam tape. I wanted to really secure this panel down because the watercolor created some warping as you know it can tend to do. And so I wanted to be able to secure that down so it would be as flat as possible. I also off screen um, cut my panels down, my watercolor panels down, I believe an eighth of an inch on um, either side, or actually it was probably a sixteenth of an inch on each side. And it allowed for a little bit of border. I kind of wanted to see if I could create that same border that I had in between the triangles. So then the next step is really just adhering my sentiment and I'm using the same glue that I did before and then I'm just going to glue it down right on top and the card is finished. It is really that simple. So anyway, oh and here what I'm doing is there was a little bit of glue that got on to the silver so I was wiping that off just gently. Anyway, it was a super easy card to make. It, you know, had some steps to it, but it was a lot of fun and I hope that you will give it a try. I'll see you next time. Bye.